Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm the worship director here at YWAM Tyler. And I want to talk to you briefly about God's heart for His church. In Matthew 16, we have this conversation between Jesus and His disciples, where Jesus asks His disciples, Who do you say I am? And then they say a few things, but then Peter responds to Him and he says, You are the Christ, or the Messiah, the Son of God. And so Jesus, in return, looks at Peter, which his name is Cephas, rock, and he says, Peter, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my church. And this right here is the first time where the word church appears in the New Testament. And Jesus says, I'm going to build it, but I'm going to build it on something. I'm going to build it on you. I'm going to build it on people. I'm going to build with people. And then Jesus makes the second statement here, and he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. To the Jewish mind, it made a lot of sense because the gates of a city was the place where the battle took place. And so Jesus said, in other words, even the forces of death can't do anything against the church that I'm building. And so today, for you and me as believers, we find three things within the church. We find protection, we find perspective, and we find purpose. Let's talk about those three things for a moment. Uh, Perspective, purpose, and protection. Let's start with protection. There's strength in numbers, and we know that. You know, when you look to the left and to the right and you find people with the same heart singing to the same God, it just gives you a sense of protection. Just like the family is supposed to be a place of safety and protection, so is the church. Protection and purpose. When you're part of a gathering of the saints, you're part of something greater than yourself. And within the church, we ought to find temporal and eternal value and purpose. And the preaching of Christ and then the corporate amen to it It just gives you determination and motivation, enthusiasm to keep on walking. So protection and purpose. Now perspective. One of the reasons why the church is one of the spheres of influence within society is historically and biblically, it always has been the place where the consciousness of man is shaped. That's the place where ideas and convictions become real. And it's within the gathering of the saints that all of a sudden we become we gain a common worldview and a common perspective. And this happens when people gather. It doesn't happen when you're on your own. Because there you can't escape the conflict. You can't escape the need to meet the other person in humility and acceptance. And when we gather around His Word, communion, baptism, theology, doctrines, mission statements, projects, worship times, prayer times, and even Sunday lunches, that's where we gain a panoramic view of the world and the God who made it all. And you just can't get that on your own. 1 Peter 2, the same Peter who had this revelation about who Jesus was, he talks about now him, Jesus, being the cornerstone. And then he talks about you and me being living stones, being built up into a spiritual house, he says, a holy priesthood. And that kind of awesome identity we only find in the gathering of the saints within the church. Now, personally for me, and my family, um, with my wife, and we have two kids now, community um, now means so much more than it ever has. As we grow up together, as we identify the strength of community, the camaraderie, the authenticity, and the helping of one another, and looking in the same direction, same vision, same heart, even though we're different and diverse, but we're looking at the same direction. It's just community means now so much more to me. And I know that community and church is so anchored in the foundational values and the DNA of what Youth of the Mission is all about. You're not on your own. And you're not supposed to be when you become a believer. You see, when you become a Christian, it's not just an individual experience, but you join together with a global family. There's truly no substitute for the fellowship of the saints that Jesus called His church. And when you love Jesus, you love His church. Even the Apostle Paul, 2,000 some years ago, he understood the urgency and he said in Hebrews chapter 10, Let's not give up meeting together. He is building his church today.